really. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name's Kyle. I get to be with you live for the next hour or so. This is a, an experiment of sorts, so we'll see how good this goes. This is how janky this, this is going to be, okay? These are my title cards. Look, it's a live with Kyle and guest. And it's backwards because I couldn't figure out how to actually make things work. Because who does computers? This is it's August thirtieth, two thousand fourteen. At least I hope so. And we're going live uh, for the very first time, or I'm going live for the very first time, in the hopes to emulate late night TV hosts. Because just as TV, you know, people say that this internet thing is a fad, but I don't know. TV could come back. We'll see. Um, lots of talking happening so far. Uh, listen, I have a few topics I want to talk about at the very beginning before I bring in my special guest, um, my mother. That's the only person who I could get on such short notice. Uh, it's going to be so weird when you see who I have, though. So, summer is coming to a close, and that's pretty disappointing, I find, because at least when you live in Canada, or at least this is how I feel living in Canada, is that we only get such a short time with summer that it always feels too short. Our summer essentially started three weeks ago and it's already over. The leaves are already falling off the trees and I already have to start wearing cardigans to work. Not that anyone's forcing me, but I've decided to start wearing them anyways. Um, this is why I like visiting California because in California I find it this remarkable place where it's like people have to complain. They have to find something to complain about, so they have to complain about how nice it is all the time. It's another beautiful day. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I live in this magical wonderland of a place. Uh, and for me, it's just like, it was like minus five today, and I hated myself when I got up in the morning. So summer coming to a close is bad, because it's my favorite favorite season of the year. Uh, lots of people love winter when it comes here to Canada. Uh, I am not one of those people. I could forego having to dig my car in the snow, scraping ice off of windows, and nearly killing everyone on my death machine that I drive to work. I like that there's people laughing. <laughs> this is a whole new experience. People are actually laughing at jokes I'm making. So summer coming to a close is a big single tear running down my face. But what do you think? Let me know. If you want to, you can leave some of those comments down in the comments below. Um, the other thing I want to talk about briefly here off the top, I don't know if you saw this or not, but my direct competition, Jimmy Kimmel, had this somewhat of a friend reunion that happened on his show here the other day. So we had uh, Jennifer Aniston on, whatever, promoting some BS movie that she's in that no one's going to go and watch anyways. But she was on there, and he was like, um, you know what, remember that show Friends you were on? And Yes, of course, we all do, uh, at least anyone that's over 20. And he says, like, oh, I read this fan script. And you're like, do you know what fan fiction is? Um, I wrote the script. And he made this remarkable like um, somehow it recreated the set of Friends, or at least Monica's apartment version of Friends. And so he had her and she had got Carney Cox and Lisa Kudrow to come out and do this little skit thing. And that's all fine and good. It was pretty funny. But there was a bit of a backlash that happened with this that I find even more hilarious than this little skit that he did. And he actually had to address it where there was actually some people, lots of people, who thought that that was real. In, in the sense that he was forcing her to be in a skit that she did not want to be in. Um, because apparently, the majority of people on the internet don't understand how network television works. <laughs> nothing on that show was just like off the cuff uh, like this show is. Uh, nothing was, everything's predetermined, rehearsed, everything like that. So the fact that there's people like freaking out about this tickles my funny bone to no end. By the way, today we are sponsored by Cool Refreshing Water. Water. It's what you drink. I was going to get something else, but um, I was not prepared today. Do you go onto Reddit? Everyone goes onto Reddit, and I spend way too much time there. This morning, if you went on, you may have seen something called an Ask Me Anything, where Usually it's celebrities, but it can really be anyone, and the whole community can go and start asking questions about anything. And there was this KFC employee that was on there. And you would think that the majority of the conversation would be centered around, why is your product so terrible, and why does it give me diarrhea every time I'm forced to eat it? But no, it, it got into this question about why is the food, why was the food so good 
a few years ago, but so bad now? And the person's answer was actually kind of interesting, which was, um, apparently, a few years ago, we'll say like three or four years ago, I can't remember the exact time frame, KFC decided that it wanted to have its restaurants really, really clean, which I know, bizarre for a fast food restaurant. So they took the time to make sure that all the deep fryers are cleaned on a very regular basis. Everything's washed down. Everything is not greasy and grimy. But the net uh, effect of that is that because the oil is being changed out all the time, it's not, I guess, percolating and fermenting into being that like delicious golden liquid that you like fry stuff in and then eat stuff out of and, and get those flavors of like 15 years of people cooking chicken in it. And if you know, if you've ever cooked with like cast iron before, you'll know that there is some truth to that. If you you don't really ever want to like wash a cast iron pat, uh, pot uh, completely because there's those flavors that get trapped into the cast iron and then come up into the other food that you're cooking and it's delicious. And apparently that's what's happened. It's apparently because KFC has now become clean that now their food doesn't taste any, any or doesn't taste as good as it once did. Um, that and they buy diseased chickens, but I don't know which one is which one is worse. Uh, talking about the end of summer, I am going to be taking one more trip. The place that I work at, uh, nicely enough, told me in very serious tones that I have to take more vacation time because I can roll over vacation days to the next year if I want to, and so I've done that for the last few years. Uh, and then this year they said, no, you, you need to take all your vacation time and uh, not be here. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the voice in my head. I added that last part in. But I'm, the, the, the eyes and the tone, I, I, could see, I could see what they were saying. And so what I decided to do was me and my friend, we're going to be driving down through British Columbia and then down eventually into Seattle. And we'll be there in Seattle from about the 12th to the 14th. I'm very much looking forward to it. The last time that I was in Seattle, I was there for the second annual PAX convention. The Penny Arcade Expo, if you're familiar with like the uh, the video game conference that happens in, in Seattle every year, um, which was a fantastic experience. Seeing that convention the first year and the second year and kind of grow to be what it is now is kind of crazy to think about. But what I also love about it is that those first couple of years, it really was like the super, super nerdy people that went there and me. Uh, and I still remember this clear as day, the, the second year being there, and there was a lineup to get into the convention hall, and the guy behind me is like, I don't think I've seen the sun this much ever in my life. And it's like, yep, we are in the exact right place. And so that's been, oh, I'm going to say almost like nine years or something like that since I've been in Seattle, so I'm sure things have changed a little bit. PAX is huge now, and I'm not going back for PAX. I am actually going down there uh, just to see the sights, but also... Uh, uh, an excuse to go is that Pomplamoose are playing down there, which has turned out to be one of my obsessed over bands, one of my most obsessed over bands. Um, I love them. I saw them this year at VidCon for the very first time, and they kind of melted my brain. Like I was not expecting to be as into it or as moved by it as I was, and I'm super psyched to go down there. So if you've never seen them or heard them, you should check them out. They have their own... YouTube channel and everything. It's great. Last topic before I bring my guest out here, because I know you love to hear me ramble on for 10 minutes now of information. There was this big article that was on CNN this morning about breastfeeding. It's like, why so squeamish about breastfeeding is what the headline was. Mostly clickbait, so people would click on it, uh, which I did. And I have to say, I, I, th this topic is becoming more and more heated. There is uh, things like on Facebook, people have gotten um, really bad press because Facebook has taken down pictures of people breastfeeding their own children that they've uploaded online. Uh, and there's people who think that you shouldn't be able to do it out in public and that people should do it on their own time. Um, and for me, I'm trying to think, like, where do I fall into this conversation? What is my actual feelings on this? And I guess it might be part of the reason why I'm so scared of boobies. Um, just because they make milk and stuff like that, and I'm not quite sure how comfortable I am with that. Um, just It's just unnatural, and, and, and I just don't like it. Um, but also, I don't think anyone should really care. When 
when we talk about like owning your own body and being comfortable in your own skin, I think you, people should be able to breastfeed their own children out in public. I have no problem with that. There is a difference though between I am breastfeeding a child here on say like a park bench or on a, uh, a couch inside of a mall, um, kind of discreetly, and being like, oh, I have to breastfeed my kids, flop, and bring them out, and it's like, read up, kids, let's go. Those are two different things. I think that you can be still respectful of other people and still be able to do that out in public uh, versus like, I'm just going to go topless now and no, not anybody's going to be able to tell me what to do. That's a character I'm workshopping. We'll see how far that goes. But to talk about this and more topics, I think it's time to introduce my guest for this first live show. It's Alive with Kyle, um, Elise Piper. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, hi, Kyle. Oh, hi. And Internet. Hello, Internet. <laughs> um, let's start there. What are your feelings, thoughts and feelings on breastfeeding? Um, I think very much like yourself, I had this sort of internal thought process of what do I actually feel about it? Mm -hmm. I have boobs. I don't... Um, what? I do. They okay. exist. Um, I don't get them out in public personally. I have no need to. I don't. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like sometimes I just you know, need to air out. It's just like you never know. Um, and I should preface this by saying my best friend just had a baby. Mm -hmm. um, all of my friends just had babies. So <laughs> boobies and babies are everywhere right yeah. now. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Right. I really don't. I'm very pro your own body right. sort of thing. Um, I think <laughs> I think there's maybe a time and a place. Sure. Um, I recently saw a woman breastfeeding in a store. Right. Um, talking to someone who worked there, an employee, um, and she was just breastfeeding, and there was no cover. I guess there was nothing. It was just boob, baby head, and the and the and the employee. Right. And I couldn't help but think how lucky she was that that employee wasn't a total creep because he <laughs> right, was just yeah. kind of doing his thing and not staring at her boob. Mm -hmm. which I would have been distracted because that kid was going to town. <laughs> By the way, I just want to say, uh, my autobiography, Boobs and Baby Head, that's what it's going to be called. <laughs> the first chapter dedicated to me. Thank that's you. right, that's right. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't have a problem with it. I think I would be distracted. I definitely have just recently where my friends will like whack out a boob <laughs> and I'll be like, oh hey, that's your boob. Yeah, yeah. We're friends, I haven't seen those since that party in Cancun. You know that? <laughs> It was a it was, it was time. A great, it was a thing. So well, I guess I guess this is a whole larger issue. I realize, but I mean, at the end of the day, uh, women obviously have bigger uh, uh, these things. Um, and <laughs> but the men go around breasticles. top breasticles, yeah. but men have go topless all the time. And there's yeah. uh, places even in Canada here where women can even go topless if Absolutely, they want to. Yeah. But there does seem to be this sexualization mm -hmm. of breasts, and I don't know I I don't know where that started or why that maybe. Is. Well, they are the buttocks of the chest. <laughs> right. It's how it was described. They're chest bumps. They're Everyone chest likes bum. a chest bum. Um, I absolutely agree with people being able to really do whatever they want as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. Yeah. Um, the one thing I did see when that became legal in, in Canada, more specifically southern Alberta, um, the number of car accidents rose exponentially. Just <laughs> rubbernecking, like, what? <laughs> so you'd see these women, and they're very proud women, they're beautiful women, and they would go topless, really just to celebrate the fact that they could, and that's that's cool. I personally, those there's parts of my body that have never seen the sun, and I don't want to get cooked in our desert-like weather. You don't want to explain <laughs> a, a second-degree burn on a certain part on of the body. On the underside of your breast. Yeah. That would be bad. What were you doing? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. The monkey bars, you know. Um, so I, I think there were some issues with that where people were not used to it, and it caused a few problems. I can, I can understand that. Um, I think it's great. I spent some time in Europe in places where it's absolutely allowed, mm -hmm. and I saw no problem with it. It was uh, kind of interesting, and being North American, it was a little risky. <laughs> um, but they have full nudity, so it's not just the boobies. You're oh, then really? distracted by the other <laughs> things. <laughs> the other things. They just, they're just happen to be there. Well... Not really on that note, but segueing <laughs> awkwardly away to something different. Uh, you're, you're, by the way, I should just point out here that I do have my blue index cards here with literally nothing written on them. <laughs> but you were, uh, you're on a diet. 
I am. I started a diet recently. Yeah, tell me about that. What's going on? Uh, well, I'm currently running, a, a, we won't call it a diet, we'll say it's a lifestyle, um, because <laughs> okay. you really have to live it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't murder people, it's just a lifestyle. Okay? It's you have just to live a lifestyle. It. <laughs> and you can get away with anything by saying that that's right. the case, uh, even topless. Uh, right. But the, uh, the idea behind it is that um, your body stores fat, and that's how you have fat, is that it's stored. Um, <laughs> kind of a uh, mind-blowing moment for me was understanding that eating fat is not what makes you fat. It's a bizarre concept. Okay, yeah. Um, but eating things like starches and, and that eventually become sugars, so sugars and starch, is how your body makes fat mm -hmm. and then stores the fat that it makes. Okay. Um, there seems to be, and I think this is just my own ignorance more than anything, there seems to be so much... Um, uh, disagreement I guess on mm -hmm. like the proper diets to have and what yeah. you need to have and that sort totally. of thing and it's always like the seemingly the somewhat consensus that is that um, always moderation in most things that you're mm -hmm. gonna have but at the same time uh, your body does need to have fats and sugars and Absolutely. stuff like that in the body but we don't need as much as what is in our like processed foods and stuff totally. like that nowadays but it's hard to navigate that when like like for instance the evil like corn syrup <laughs> High fructose corn syrup. syrup. Ding. I wish we had a graphic and stuff like that. My brand name also, by the way, uh, is that it's in everything. Like I can't go and buy any condiments or anything like that, even at a, 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 a restaurant or something, without knowing that this probably has corn syrup in it. Totally. Well, and the, and the biggest thing is our diets are so sugar saturated right now. Mm -hmm. um, and this was part of my breakthrough. Um, I don't eat sugar or starch anymore. Uh, have to think about all the things you like eating. None of those. Yeah, you anymore. don't eat any of those things. Um, I have to say, how hard was that? Like the first week. <laughs> uh, well, something that I had tried. I tried actually for a year. I went without dairy or grains. Okay. Just to see if I could do it, because I have the willpower of a gnat. So, right. um, gave that a try, and I did it for a year, and I was like, wow, I can really do this. Mm. Um, and I did some research, and uh, the diet that I'm, the lifestyle I'm currently living is a ketogenic lifestyle. Okay. Which so keto is what? Keto yeah. is, the, is the slang. The, the slang. Street, to, the street for it. I'm so street. You <laughs> can tell that. Uh, your at rep my, is renowned. My light purple shirt that I wear, my deep V that I have going on here. Pretty street, man. We're pretty summery today. Uh, the, right. the last two days the that we have. The yeah. Um, and if, for those of you who don't know what that is, keto is essentially high fat, adequate adequate protein and very very little to no carbs um, and it creates a state in your body called ketogenic or ketogenic state um, that essentially transfers you from running on sugars to running on ketones okay it's very cool it sounds like Scientology a little bit to me <laughs> <laughs> and it feels that way okay good Tom Cruise does come to your house and delivers yeah, your, your food absolutely. Every week. Totally, it's like it's like J C Penny, but with Tom Cruise. It's not J C Penny. What am I thinking of? Something else, where they bring the food to your house. Yes, uh, it's, uh, yes. Keep going. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, brand names. <laughs> We're sponsored by J C Penny this week. Go buy a crock pot. <laughs> or a crew neck. It doesn't Whichever. matter. Um, but it does. It, it sounds counterintuitive, and certainly it goes against everything that I was ever taught. I don't know if you guys remember the food rainbow. Growing up, um, we had the food pyramid here. Okay, yeah, yeah. pyramid. It's the same idea, and and grains were always actually pretty high on yeah, the pyramid, yeah. and there was lots of them. Um, but I guess the the idea is that pre farming, uh, uh, what was it? Revolution, yeah, right, I guess, yeah. where we're 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 suddenly farming everything. Um, we didn't eat a whole lot of grains. We didn't eat a whole lot of sugars other than what was in fruit. Right, right. Um, now the biggest comment I get is that sounds like the Atkins diet. That's the biggest one I get. Right, yeah. Which I don't know too much. But I know that there's like <laughs> I, I know two diets, the Atkins diet and the South Beach diet. And I don't really know what either of that means. <laughs> well and, and Atkins kind of was that thing of like, have a piece of cake, don't eat the apple though. The apple's bad. Really? Because it was all about levels oh. of sugar. Okay. And it kinda of got got way off track because it's wrong. That's wrong. That sounds wrong to me. <laughs> um, I feel like that was that someone just subverted it just so they could justify it. So like, yeah. I needed to eat a chocolate cake, and I had to make up a reason why. Yeah, totally. 
Um, but yeah, it's counterintuitive. As an example, uh, for breakfast yesterday, I had um, pan-fried scallops mm -hmm. uh, coated in cheese, yeah. wrapped in bacon, and they were fried in coconut oil. Wow. Um, the tastiest thing you'll ever gonna eat. Sure. Ever. Um, and I lost four pounds this week, so I'm winning. <laughs> it's the answer. Hashtag winning. Hashtag winning. Losers. Um, but you really have to you have to do your research. You have to do it properly. Right. Because um, I could imagine this going really the wrong way if right. you weren't doing it properly. Sure. So do you? Are you into like weighing food or anything, or you just know which foods you can have? Um, well, I use uh, a few apps. I don't know if we're allowed to say the name. Uh, I use My Fitness Pal a sure, lot. We can do that. Um, it's a sponsor. It's a sponsor. Uh, we'll give them a shout out. Um, and they they allow you to set custom macros for your food, so you can tell oh, okay. them how much uh, you're allowed to eat, mm -hmm. and it'll tell you that you're going to be fat if you eat that. Um, you be fat, nice. yo. Okay. Just... Yeah, it says that. It's like you're you're going to be enormous if you eat this. Um, <laughs> and I keep surprising the app. Uh, but yeah, it's a super counterintuitive diet that actually works. Um, I've lost about forty pounds in total. Um, friends of mine that are doing it have lost anywhere between 25 to 40 in the first couple of, of mm -hmm. I say the first quarter, the first few months. Yeah. So uh, how much money do they pay you? Uh, well, it's not a brand name, but maybe I should copyright that or something. Maybe. I know that they're uh, going back to Reddit again. I th I'm pretty sure there's a big subreddit on Oh, it's huge. Like can... Absolutely. They retweet me all the time. Do they really? Yes. Yeah. That's so funny. I am validated of my existence by Keto retweeting me. <laughs> Our uh, Keto. Hearts. <laughs> this is kind of slightly off base, but there's an article I was reading here recently that I thought was kind of fascinating, just talking about that like pre-agricultural revolution, where mm -hmm. the prevailing thought for so many years was that people started building like cities and communities because they wanted to hoard resources, like mm -hmm. build food and raise cattle and stuff like that. And there's some researchers now that are questioning that and wondering if it was actually slightly different, where people got into bands. And it was almost it was actually kind of because of war <laughs> that cities became. Uh, that sounds you know, they, accurate, actually. Because it's just like it's like I don't I hate you guys stealing my stuff all the time. So how do I not have you do that? Get more people onto my band and fight you. Totally. So it's the zombie yeah. apocalypse. That's exactly. Yeah. So the zombie apocalypse created our modern civilization. Write that on history <laughs> quick, uh, quiz, kids. Um, going to something a little bit more. Somewhat mainstream? Not really. Wow. <laughs> World of Warcraft. Yeah. Apparently you're big into that. Are you I... are a paladin? Dark elf? <laughs> a panda that you can be now, I think? <laughs> there's yeah, there's some wild stuff. Um <laughs> so currently I'm I'm rolling a blood elf uh, oh. paladin. What does that mean? Uh it means that she, they're the prettiest race oh. that also has feminine looking women. Um because okay. I'm pro feminine looking women and um <laughs> not the bearded dwarf women well and that's a thing so you yeah. have to watch that um yeah i love it i really enjoy it it's an excellent way to waste what little free time i have <laughs> <laughs> on average what do you think per week um so i did slash played which for those of you in the know tells you how long you've spent oh. in game yes okay. and on one of my characters it's logged like four months of game time oh, on a character man. I don't play anymore. Um, yes. But that was the last time I was skinny because I just didn't eat. It was terrible. Right. That's not a good diet. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> Literally just but, like ingesting But that was the last time it. I was really thin because I just played it. I would walk home from work to play it in my lunch hour. So I have no reason to judge. Like I like video games a lot, and I play I play Dungeons and Dragons. So nice. I mean I'm playing like the the board game version of WoW essentially. It's, yeah, WoW is like your bastardized sister. Exactly. Um, what about it though? What about it uh, is enthralling to you? Um, so something I've talked about multiple times with my friends is that it's it's kind of achievement based. So if you feel like you're not getting anywhere in your life, it is a great way to feel like you're yeah. doing something because I'm alive <laughs> I did it yeah. um, because you are and you get little rewards and it dings and it's <laughs> you're like ooh I did that that and it's, it, it dings okay well it dings. you sold me right it kind of goes bling <laughs> oh, okay and, and you're like whew I got a little further in this fake world with my fake person yeah. in this fake life 
Do you think that with there's like things like the Oculus Rift and like this VR technology that's mm -hmm. becoming like super popular now? Do you think that people are going to start to regress more and more into online worlds? Like that's a fear that everyone keeps saying is like yeah. people are going to regress and people aren't going to go into the world. But do you feel like that's true? That's going to happen? Do you know? And it's I I believe yes, okay. but I don't think it's necessarily detrimental. Um, a lot of people I know have met their partners online. Right. Um, they play World of Warcraft together. I play with lots of people. Um that I really, really want to keep in contact with, and it's something that we can do to hang out together when you know, you're know, you thousands of miles apart. Um, yeah, I could totally see like virtual reality suits and people going on online dates. Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw recently. There's a marriage in World of Warcraft. There is. You can get married. There's yeah. a wedding dress. There's a Valentine's Day picnic. <laughs> How much dress. is that in-game money that you have to uh, That's a great question. I haven't looked at it recently. No. Because uh, I'm not marriage hungry, but because <laughs> I feel like it's a great substitute if you're like crazy marriage hungry, just get married and wow. Sure. <laughs> um, but there was there was a commercial very recently that I think you'd be into, and it okay. was by Durex. We're not going to go up too far off the, the walk here, but it was another sponsor. Another so sponsor. Stay strong. <laughs> um, stay strong. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, their their concept was they had a long distance couple. They got the couple to connect on another brand name video service provider. <laughs> okay. <yes. laughs> um, and there was it was a bra with like built in hands and underwear with built in parts. And this couple could activate this on their computers. They were essentially like touching each other virtually. Okay. So I have to write a website down here in one second. <laughs> well, I don't think this is technology you can buy, but it was a great oh. commercial, and I recommend you take a look at it. Um, and I could totally see it happening, and I've been in a couple long-distance relationships. I feel like there's nothing that sucks more than just wanting to go like this. <laughs> so, I'm so turned on right now. <laughs> and you can't. So it's, I think it'd be a really interesting concept. To be able to yeah, yeah, feel that physical sensation of someone. Because I think that's probably the hardest part about long distance relationships. Because you can have Skype or being talking with people, totally. writing things. But it's that physical. Like, like, yeah, exactly. But you want that physical touch sometimes. Absolutely. Not even in a sexual way necessarily, but yeah. just a physical touch with someone. Establishing intimacy through physical contact. Yes. <laughs> um, what's that like? <laughs> I don't Well, we just did it. Do you feel weird? No, no. <laughs> Um, but you have to leave right now. Okay. <laughs> um, what's your deal? What's my deal? Yeah. Like just my, my thing? Your my thing. thing. Um, I am an artist. I've been doing uh, really anything creative that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. I set a challenge for some a group of people recently to try and, and think of something that I hadn't uh, attempted, a medium I hadn't used, something that I hadn't done right. creatively. And they came up short. And what's funny when people do that is they tend to go for like the bio uh, liquids and, and oh, <laughs> materials. Okay. And they want to know what you've done with that. Oh, and interesting, yeah. We're just going to take that off the table. If you can think of it, we've made something out of it. You don't need to talk about poop or pee or <laughs> I was going to go there, but apparently yeah, you've uh, It's already spoken. done. We don't worry about it. We don't worry about it. Um, but you're into music as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so? Well, I used to be a band manager, if you can call it that. Which it's, is crazy sauce to me, but okay. <laughs> well, and it's not as cool as it sounds. You're kind of um, you're kind of in a lot of really dirty back rooms, dressed really nice, trying to impress people. Um, so you have no nice clothes by the by the end of that. Um, but it's really cool, and I, I've stayed friends with a lot of these people, and a, a really good uh, friend of mine just got picked up by a label, and it's really exciting for him. He's recording their first album. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So what is it about music that draws you to it? I mean, because there's a lot of people who say they're into music. Yeah. Uh, but what is it about music for you that excites you? So let's, let's preface this by saying, when I say I'm into music, my iTunes library yeah. fills a terabyte hard drive. Holy Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I love music. Um, I love all kinds of music, and I like that there tends to be a tone for every part of my life. So, kind of like a soundtrack to my existence. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone builds that kind of soundtrack on their life, for totally. sure. Totally. Um, and I've always loved how music influences films when you're watching yeah. when you're watching movies. It, it kind of sets the tone a little bit. And that's, that's my day. I have 
lots of wireless speakers in my house. Sure. There's music pretty much always playing. Um, Do you have like your workout music and stuff too? Sure. Yeah, yeah my <laughs> playlists are hilarious. Yeah. It, it, somewhat similar. I don't have that much music. I have like maybe around 5,500 songs, I think, mm -hmm. in my library currently. But nothing is funnier to me when I like to just put it on random and be like, <laughs> there's a classical opera, and now, now it's punk music, and then it's <laughs> this thing. It's like totally opposite sides of the world all the time. Well, and I love that because I'm a big like discography, um, mm -hmm. full album person. I really so do you listen that. to full albums when you listen totally. to music usually? Totally, yeah. And then when I buy the album, I'll normally listen to it a few times, just all the way through, mm -hmm. um, because I know people go through the effort of actually putting those in that order. Right. Um, the biggest thing is when you put it on shuffle and you hear a song you haven't heard in years, oh, yeah. or maybe even a song you've never heard before, because it's like that bonus track on an album that you bought. Yeah, it's like, ago. what is this? And when did I <laughs> buy this? <laughs> what was I drinking that yeah. made me buy this? Um, I love that. I think that's just so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you were telling me, though, before we started recording, being a band manager, you were also... You were with metal bands a lot? Yes, yeah. So how's oh. that? How is that? Now, I have heard that, count, again, somewhat counterintuitively, metal bands are usually one of the nicest people to work with. They are all super nice, yeah. super intelligent guys. I say all. I shouldn't generalize. I hate, I hate generalization. Yeah. But every single person I've met in that genre has been phenomenal. I will um, say Guar scares the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it's funny because I used to be really into that culture. Um, not that I'm not now. I right. just have a daytime job. Um, <laughs> I have a life. <laughs> um, so it, it, I've never met a single person that was awful to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, a sweet little girl, so people are generally extra nice to me unless right. they're awful. <laughs> um, it was funny coming to North America where people feel they need to compensate. In what way? Um, so if you're in a metal band in North America, apparently you have to be mean. You have to be oh, awful. okay. Whereas in Europe, where a lot of these bands are from, they don't need to compensate. Their band is is one aspect of their life. They're not mean the rest oh, of the time. interesting. Whereas I came here, and this woman in this band I was talking to was just awful. She was really mean. She actually kicked me with her high heel shoe. What? <laughs> right? And I was I Who does that? Well and it was it was really pathetic. And yeah. I don't know you guys can't tell, but I lift. I'm pretty rough. Um just ripped, yeah. Just ripped. And I was gonna jack her in the face. Just like, <laughs> like what, you, what are you playing with, lady? Um Step off, man. Step <laughs> off. Well and and it's funny because the whole community is really really sweet. I went to uh, the uh, the Black Crusade, which was a touring gig um, out of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like I want to say it was Machine Head and Arch Enemy and people like that. Right. Not you know super uh, you know hipster metal as I call it, where yeah. they just make up names. <laughs> They're like oh, thrash box purple, and you're like yeah that's. <laughs> That's nice. Hey, um, I love thrash box purple. Okay, <laughs> well, you have no color. right. It's your color. Um, and I, I remember being stood in Brixton, which is just this awful part of London. <laughs> just a it's terrible part. It's terrifying. Part of We're driving along, and I look over, and my friend, as he's saying, "We're in Brixton now." There's a man. A brick comes <laughs> through the window. <laughs> there's a man in a chip shop on the on the on the street. Right. And he's being punched out of the chip shop. <laughs> the man is falling backwards out of the store because he was punched in the face. Yep, we're in Brixton. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad we're here. Um, but, it, you know, you're stood in this crowd of people that are terrifying to look at. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are very intimidating. And they're super nice. And they're sharing their, uh, you know, contraband with each other. <laughs> like and it's, contraband. Uh, contraband, whatever that might be. Um, and it was just really nice, and everybody was. I've nice. heard again. I'm to generalize completely <laughs> here. That so I've heard metal bands being like some of the greatest people to work with, but the acts, the genre that's almost the worst to work with is country artists. Apparently, like the wholesome people that you think are like super down home. <laughs> Stuff like nope, they're the worst people in the world to talk to. I, I have no idea. I have no experience with either. I think there's maybe some. Uh, again, they're compensating a little bit. Right. Because right. if you are super wholesome. Yeah. On the outside, that only leaves room. Whatever. I like Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, I mean, I think there's a little bit of diva ness oh, to yes. country music, and and even for the men. 
Brad Paisley is the biggest to you that. I've heard that. Mm. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've never worked with him personally. Right. Uh, uh, he wouldn't let me. Um, <laughs> Apparently you work on diamonds too. This is so fascinating to me. All this stuff that you've done. My <laughs> life, a colorful. Uh, diamonds, and I have written down here on my on my card uh, that you also run a magazine. <laughs> I did. Remember magazines on printed uh, paper? paper? They were glossy too. Kids, um, we lived in a magical world once. <laughs> where cameras actually had shutters. It was beautiful. <laughs> I um, love the fact that there's going to be a time, most likely in like three years, where kids are going to be like, why did it make that stupid noise when I take a picture so on my phone? I saw phone? that. I saw that. Did movie. you really? This little girl, and it, yeah. the, I knew the guy, so it's it's yeah. her uncle, and he's taking a picture of his niece, and his iPhone made yeah. that sound. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, what is that? That's stupid. What is that sound? Why does it make that? And he started trying to explain to her like what a what a shutter was. Right. And we have DSLRs. They still make a, a sound, kind of a... Yeah. A sound, yeah. But it's not the the same. It's really no like the old type camera. Yeah, thing. I took pictures. Multiple with like pieces all sliding together. It's, yeah. 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 Um, and, and she was just looking. And I'm like, no, you're stupid. I'm not having it. <laughs> That's dumb. Why did they not just use their iPhone? <laughs> First off, why are you talking to me, old man? And second <laughs> of all, I don't care. So you mentioned friends earlier. Yeah. Was, oh yeah, yeah. I was on the train sitting behind these two girls, and I will probably never forget this. They must have been maybe 14. Yeah. You know sort of average teenage girls and this Stacy I saw this show on Netflix yeah have you heard of friends and I was like no <laughs> no no it's like your last bit of youth is like escaping from <laughs> you like, no and trying to grab it <laughs> and I did I felt really old because I I remember the whole series well when you think about it like when it started well, I'm like around the age they would have been when they first started that show <laughs> as friends. But I mean, I love the fact that they got to like sit around in a coffee place before work every morning in New York yeah, City somehow. Yeah, I never somehow. have time for that. I don't but know. <laughs> it's like, I don't have time for that. How do you have time for that? I don't have time to see my friends. This is the first time we've hung out. <laughs> um, a, a friend of mine uh, who has been on this channel before, Daniel Melville Jones, uh, we had a conversation once because we watched this movie called... Um, before Sunrise, okay. and it's part of this trilogy that, that I really, really adore where they follow around the same characters every nine years. Anyways, when they first meet, this first movie was made in like the early 90s, and it was like they couldn't make this film nowadays because all they would have done is say, here's my phone number, and they would have texted each other. It was like, no, this is like they met up each other on a train, had no way to communicate from, with one another, like, let's just spend the day together before you have to go. Yeah. I was like, well... Times change, and maybe it's for the better. I don't know. Yeah, like someone was telling me about their long distance relationship nine years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no brand name video calling services. No. I don't like them. I'm not going to say their name. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. Not a sponsor, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. Keep in touch with other brand names. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it was wild. They're like, we used to call, and our phone bills were like thousands of dollars because we were Yikes. calling overseas yeah. to our partner. And I'm like, how do you even meet? How did you even meet? I wouldn't. I was not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're fantastic, but, but no. not a thousand dollars. Fantastic. I just, no. I can't do that. <laughs> can't um, but yeah, go back to the magazine. It was, it was fun. I worked for a diamond house in Europe. Um. Mm -hmm. Briefly before becoming a fundraiser, so you know opposites <laughs> right. there. Um, why, why diamonds? Like, was that something you were looking for, or was just like this is a job I'm um, gonna take it? I had just <laughs> so I finished college at seventeen. Oh, right. Uh, we're not gonna write. We're not gonna go into the details of that. Okay. Um, and I needed a job. I was yeah. like, I I freaking need a job. Right. Because I was already living on my own. I was very independent, and there was this interview at this beautiful building, and I was like, mm. oh, I'll just go to that. And right. being this really, again, adorable little girl, I got hired, which is I'm so grateful for, <laughs> by the way. I learned so I'm much 17, and I need a job. <laughs> oh, you're adorable. <laughs> oh, you're hired. <laughs> the old men will give you lots of money, is essentially <laughs> what the concept was. Um, and it worked out really well. And it, it, it popped up one day, they're like, oh, we're we have this lifestyle magazine that we do and we get people to pay for advertising and it gets our brand out there and I'm like, oh, amazing. Yeah. And the question started, do you know Photoshop? And I had I'd just done my, you know, my right. foundation 
uh, art degree, and I was like, so can, do you feel comfortable saying what version of Photoshop that would have been? Oh, um, because it wouldn't have been like CS3. Probably, no, no, right? no, no, <laughs> it was probably like Photoshop, yeah, <laughs> <It's not> Photoshop, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, it was a while ago, <laughs> and um. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, well, I, I do. I'm, I'm actually really good at it. And they're like, okay, here's all this advertising from these designers. Here's our magazine. Like, just do it. We need someone to do it. That The last person quit. And I found out <laughs> sure. later why. But <laughs> but it was it was hard work. It was really fun. I probably only worked on about four or five issues. Okay. But they were uh, twice yearly. Okay. So they were okay. big They were big magazines. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because now I have friends that work at German Vogue. I have all these. Uh -huh. I have lots of friends. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. A lot of contacts. A lot of contacts. Um, I have a guy for everything. For, oh, yeah. Or I, a lady. <laughs> lady. Yeah. yeah. I, I, have, I have a lot of that guy. I have yeah. a lot of guy. No worries. So, yeah, I have like a diamond guy now. Um, <laughs> Sort my diamonds. <laughs> um, I would like to be the person who just had guys for everything. Yeah, I have a guy for that. <laughs> oh, that's me. I, I'll teach you how. Okay. Sure. Um, Throw boobs. <laughs> boobs. <laughs> um, you have a boob guy. <laughs> I have a boob guy. <laughs> Sometimes that's hard to find. No. Nope. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really interesting, and it it really gave me a great concept of business, which I yeah. appreciate for sure. That's cool. Like yeah. what? Um, well, <laughs> one of the concepts that my managing director had at the time was to just say yes, and we'll figure it out later. <laughs> Which I love, and it's worked out so well. And forces you to teach or learn things. For Absolutely. Sure. Well, and and every single job I've had after that has mm -hmm. been really successful because you're yeah. just like, yes, absolutely. Let's figure out how to do this. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And uh, it's a great way to get stuff done. And uh, yeah, kind of that making sure that you live up to your word sort of thing. Yeah, that's um, cool. Because yeah, the, the the jewelry industry in general is actually very trust based. Okay. Surprise. I would thought like really cutthroat too. Maybe it is. Um, it, it can be, but you have to trust the people you're working with because you're sending them millions of dollars True. in yeah. diamonds on a plane with a guy and you're like Hopefully it comes back. <laughs> you're like, hopefully we get paid for it and they receive it. Um, because insurance is like you might as well not have it in right. some cases. Kids yeah. are just like, yeah. we're not gonna pay you for those millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's actually hugely trust based. Oh, yeah. Um, so there's no way that I can check the comment section right now, which is too bad. So I have no idea if anyone's actually watching us, but uh, <laughs> I hope so. If you're leaving comments in the comments, I will be answering them after we're done recording. So keep type it away if you are, and tell me what you like, what you don't like, and hopefully you can hear us because that's going to be hilarious <laughs> if you can. Um, <laughs> just just like they're not saying anything worthwhile, which is most of the time. I'm going to throw this card away. This is now, in my right hand, what I'm holding up is the four essential questions uh -oh. that we need to get to, okay? Um, how are babies made? So I think this is actually answered in one of my recent uh, tweets. I am a huge Twitter person, mm. and my friends made a drunk Twitter yes. for me. Nice. Um, and it's all just things that I've said with no context. Um, so the one that cropped up very recently was that uh, God uh, threw up in your heart with his penis, and that's how love was made. <laughs> and I think the babies are an extension of that. Kyle, well, I really do. Okay. Tattooed on my chest, that phrase. Um, by the way, the next time I do this, I want to try and do this on a monthly basis. So if you have essential questions, put them <laughs> in the comments below, and I'll ask my next guest those. Uh, number two. Why do I do the things I do? You or me? Uh, me, you. specifically. Why do you do the things yeah. you do? Why do I do the things My I do? My insight on the enigma that is Kyle Marshall. That's right. Um, Kyle, I think that you are a very genuinely motivated person mm -hmm. in the sense that you are motivated by things that are genuine. <laughs> when you see something beautiful or interesting, I don't think that there's a hesitation for you at all. And for a lot of people there is. You, you hesitate. I hesitated recently, and I kick myself all the time that what, I was hesitating. What was that? Um, or do you not want to say? It, it fell into the topic that we're not discussing. Okay, okay, that's fine. But, that's fine. but, <laughs> <laughs> but we agreed on one thing that we weren't going to talk about. Cabbage. Life. Yeah, well, that too. We'll say. Um, but, but, yeah, when I think you do things because you are genuinely interested in finding out the answer or seeing more of that. 
I, I feel. Am I, am I wrong? No, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me more good things about myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, look at this jaw. First of all, you can't see it, but in this light, <laughs> this man is just cut right here, and it is beautiful. Oh, uh, yeah. You, you don't know this person, but we work with someone named Matt who is... Oh, God, so, he's gorgeous. Like, out of granite. Is he related to you? Oh, Patrick uh, Swayze. Patrick Swayze, yeah. He's he, distantly related to Patrick Swayze. And it, you can tell. I recently <laughs> stalked his Facebook. I'm sorry, Matt's wife. You're beautiful. And you have yeah. a beautiful baby. Um, yeah. But I recently, he, he posted something, and I was like, oh, it's Matt. And I went and I looked at him, and there's a photo of him and, like, four cousins or brothers or something. Yeah. They're all gorgeous. It's amazing. <laughs> I was like, this is not fair. How do you do that? <laughs> what historical figure do you think you could have beat up? Historical figure that I could have beat up. Yeah, like Mother Teresa, like right in one of the guy to her. Which, I guess not who you could have beat up. Who would you want to? to who beat would up? I want to beat up? Yeah, and you can't say Hitler because that's that's. Oh, easy. that's well, no, I. Well, <laughs> no, I wouldn't beat up Hitler. He, I mean, he had some good ideas. I kind of, I kind of, maybe not someone in specifically, but I really, really like uh, all sort of the, the Viking stories yeah. and Viking history and, and that period of history. I feel like I would want to be like a crazy. Like Valkyrie woman, like just beating up okay. all these amazing, like you know, Eric the Viking type people. Right, right, right. Not Eric the Viking because he's you know kind of does it himself, but that's right. Just uh, why? Just why? Yeah. Other than forty-two. Right. Yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> why? Too. <laughs> oh, on your lap. Oh, thank you. It's like a tip. Man. It's like a tip. Um, just, <laughs> anyway. Just a tip. Um, why? Wow. Well, I think to experience, Kyle. Let's get really out there, man. We're, we're gonna open up our We're all we're like one organism, man. It doesn't it's matter. Totally it's cool. totally the Gaia, Mother Gaia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mother Gaia. Yeah. Um, I've seen hair. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think just to experience. I'm all about the experience. Yeah. Um, I recently downloaded an app that I told you about an today. An app. <laughs> uh, a mobile application. Mobile application. And then I sent an electronic mail message. Um, <laughs> on the Yahoo. Yes. Um, sorry, Google. Um, <laughs> sorry, Google. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are Lord and Savior, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, called Hit List, and it's really, really cool. It mm -hmm. lets you uh, save places you want to go, and then it will tell you when it's cheap to go there. And I have a huge list of places that I want to yeah. go. And I'm excited to just go on random adventures. I love traveling so much, and it pains me to say that I've never been outside of North America, wow. like ever. And we need to go on a trip. Yeah, like I really want to see Europe. I really want to see Japan. I really want to see Japan, a bunch of different Asia. things. Yeah, I usually go into Asia because I would be a giant over there. <laughs> Basically, they would bring me loaves of bread and chicken legs. And I'd be like, yes, give it to me. <laughs> I, will not, I will not grind you up. And where's my harp? Um, <laughs> yeah, that is the first show. I don't know how successful it was, um, but it was, it was something. We, we can't say at least one thing out of this. It was something. Um, Elise, how can people get a hold of you on the internet if they want to? Okay, so I have a Twitter handle at Elise Piper, E-L-I-S-E-P-I-P-E-R. Uh, you can get a hold of me personally that way. If you're interested in any of the music stuff I do, that's at Freya Madness. How do you spell Freya? That's a great question. Oh, okay. <laughs> doesn't even know. We'll put it in the, we'll put it in the comments. Yeah, we'll put it in the, well, yeah, um, the at Freya Madness, and you're also, I'm also uh, reachable through that on Facebook as well. Um, Elise Piper or Elise Lynn dot com is going to be a thing shortly, so oh, watch okay. out for that. Um, this YouTube channel is mine, so you can just hit the subscribe button if you really want to. Uh, you'll see live shows like this every month, and then I do a blog every Thursday. Um, which if you, if you search my name, Kyle Marshall, you'll find it. Way back in the day when I made this channel, I made it Mad Dog Fifty Three. You can find it <laughs> that way too. But really, it's just my name. That's how I go by really on the site nowadays. My Twitter is Ian William, the most complicated way to spell that that you can possibly imagine. Uh, but it's my two middle names. It's E I O N W I L L I A M if you want to search me on Twitter. This was somewhat successful, so that's Yay! good. I'm going to stop the broadcast now, but tell your friends about it. Uh...